In this lesson, we'll take a look at working with seed buildings. Open up the new objects menu and scroll over to buildings. The first subcategory is seed buildings. The first type, background wooden buildings, is not like the rest, so we'll skip that one for now. The other four styles of seed buildings all work the same. If you're familiar with the Trials HD editor, seed buildings are very similar to the warehouse blocks, but of course you get a lot more control and options. Start by spawning a seed building in the editor. Before you place it, the seed building can be moved around and rotated like any other object. For this example, I'm going to snap it to the driving line and place it at ground level. You'll notice once you place the seed, you can no longer select the whole thing and move it. You can only select individual parts. To make the building bigger, select the wall and hit Y. The building is now one block bigger. Hitting X will delete the new block. If you want to grow your building faster, you can multi-select a few walls, or by holding LB and resting your cursor over one wall for a few seconds, it'll automatically highlight every wall on that plane so you can select all at once. Now when you hit Y, it will add a new block to every wall you've selected, and conversely, X will delete every block selected. You can of course also grow the building up or down by selecting the roof or floor. As you add blocks to your seed building, the inside stays completely hollow, so you can now use it to build an interior track. Now let's check out seed building options. Select any part of the building and bring up its properties. The first two options affect the whole building. Select Building Settings to bring up a submenu with a few options for adjusting your building. Re-randomize building will randomly change the variation of every wall in your building. We will cover manually changing variations in just a moment. Most seed buildings have wall variations that are broken or destroyed. The shack is the only seed building with no broken variations. Adjusting the destruction slider will randomly turn some of your walls into the broken variation. What percentage you set it to will determine how many walls it affects. Selecting colorize the whole building will bring up a color picker you can use to change the color of your building. Finally, we have physics type. These are the same options we've already discussed in the advanced objects properties tutorial. Keep in mind, however, that the building itself can't have dynamic physics properties, so this only affects how physics objects will react when they come into contact with the building. Back in the main properties menu, we have one more option that affects the whole building. Select move building and it will break your building down to just the block you have selected. You can now move or rotate the block however you like, and when you place it again, the rest of the building will return. The last option will only affect the wall you currently have selected. Wall type is used to determine what type of wall you have. Auto randomly sets the wall. All walls will be normal variations, not destroyed ones, unless you have adjusted the destruction percentage. Solid randomly sets the wall to one of the normal variations. With solid set, this wall will never be set to a destroyed variation, regardless of your destruction percentage. Broken sets the wall to a broken variation. The variation will be decided by the walls that surround it. So for example, if you have two broken walls side by side, they will automatically be variations that visually fit together. Empty gets rid of the wall altogether. And finally, Manual allows you to choose which variation you want. When you set the wall type to Manual, a few more options pop up. The broken checkbox decides if you are using broken or solid variations. You can then use the variation slider to choose which variation you want. Finally, if you have the broken checkbox checked, there are some decorations you can add. These are basically broken corner pieces you can use to visually connect some of the broken variations that don't fit together perfectly. One last thing to note about seed wall variations is that different levels have different variations. The first block you place will always be the ground level, regardless of where you place it. Any blocks you add above the initial seed will be upper levels, and every block below will be lower levels. When working with seed buildings for the first time, I would suggest creating a building in each style and check out what kind of variations are available with the ground, upper, and lower walls. Also keep in mind that some styles will also have variations for the floor and ceiling. 